Hi grade 12, welcome to another lesson. I am Mr. R.K. Khan. Today's lesson is going to be on non-coding DNA, DNA replication and the cell cycle. So all of these uh, subtopics interlink with each other. I would advise you to please watch my previous lessons on this playlist as it links uh, as all of these lessons link together because I am following the CAPS curriculum. I am following the CAPS curriculum for the grade 12 life sciences. Alright, so today we need to learn about non-coding DNA and coding DNA. Okay, grade 12, we know that DNA has specific functions that are discussed in the previous lesson, right? And one of those functions is that they are in charge or they are responsible for the, 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 the synthesis of proteins or protein synthesis, the manufacturing of proteins. And we know that proteins have specific functions in the body. We talked about enzymes. Enzymes are protein in nature. They undergo bio, biochemical processes without getting used up. So we know that DNA codes for specific proteins and proteins are responsible for different functions in the body. So coding DNA is the DNA that codes for functional protein. Functional proteins. Right. Functional proteins. So these proteins go on to Right. These proteins go on to take part in biochemical processes. Right. Responsible for processes in the body. Right. Then we come to non-coding DNA. Okay. Non-coding DNA. Uh, non-coding DNA. As you can see from the from the from the name of it, non-coding it does not code for any specific uh, for functional proteins, All right? So we call this scientists call this junk DNA, junk DNA, okay, junk DNA. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, debate going around, a lot of research into junk DNA. Some most scientists say that they have no uh, no uh, visible or no um, f a function in the body, whereas some uh, scientists have come come up with theories or explanations to the, their their specific function. But we're not going into detail into junk DNA. All you need to know is that DNA, DNA, the human genome. When we say human genome, it means all the DNA in the human body. So human genome, human genome. Okay, human genome means all the DNA in the human body. Only more than 98%, so since say uh, 98%, 98% of this DNA is non-coding. Non-coding or junk DNA. Alright, whereas less than, when we say 2%, let us say 2% is coding DNA. Alright, so only about 2% of DNA have, uh, have scientists found that they are responsible for coding specific proteins that are responsible for processes in the body. So these are the uh, things we need to understand. And now some terminology. <clears throat> in certain textbooks, you'll find that non-coding DNA is referred to as introns. Introns. Introns are non-coding DNA and then coding DNA are referred to as exons. So these are some terminology that you need to uh, understand. So an example in a MCQ uh, question, they could ask you uh, what is another term for coding DNA? So your answer will be 
exons. What's another term for non-coding DNA? Introns and so forth. All right. Okay, great jobs. Um, a large portion of the non-coding DNA is referred to as junk DNA. But there is some non-coding DNA. I just use another color. I use another color here. Okay, some uh, non-coding DNA. They produce or they code. Okay, you can say produce uh, functional non-coding RNA. Okay, RNA. An example of this would be tRNA. Right. So just take this down. I don't want to get into uh, too much of uh, detail when it comes to this part. Okay, get so some non-coding DNA produces functional non-coding RNA. RNA is also a nu nucleic acid. Okay, just like DNA, nucleic acid. Right, that's important to note. So I am going to do a lesson on um, uh, the differences between RNA and DNA in, uh, in, the, in, in later videos. Right, and then okay, great 12. So we've learned so far that what are non coding and coding DNA. We learned about the human genome, we learned about that 98% are non coding and 2% codes. And these uh, coding DNA they produce functional proteins, and these functional proteins are responsible for the many processes in the body. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, the cell cycle. Okay, grade 12. So the cell cycle has been covered in the grade 10 uh, syllabus, but I'm just going to give you a, a short recap of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is basically the life cycle of a particular cell, of, of the cells in your body. So we start here. So this is the beginning of the, of the beginning or the start beginning. Right. And then you can see now that the cell is small, it, just, it, it has just begun its life, then as it's growing, it's, as it's moving, living its life, it's growing, it's uh, undergoing all its processes and so forth. And then it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and then obviously it's getting older, the cell is getting older and then it comes to the end of its life. So, a cell, in the cell cycle, you can see that 90% uh, maybe like greater than equal to 90% of the time of a cell is spent in the interface interface of uh, of the cell cycle All right just quickly uh, before I carry on so a recap of grade 10 syllabus I hope you remember interface PMAT PMAT is your mitotic phases All right so this is your my Mitotic phases. All right, so we know that P is prophase. All right, so prophase. M is metaphase. A is anaphase. And T is telophase. All right, so we should all know these phases of the mitotic phases and the interface. So most of the time of a cell is, is spent in interface. This is where the cell lives and undergoes its uh, processes and so forth. Okay. Then it comes to a point where the cell has to now um, has to now uh, produce new cells. All right. So and then we call this mitosis. So mitosis was also covered in the grade, in grade ten syllabus. So please. Uh, go back to your grade 10 content and uh, read, read up on that. Right. But I will, I will uh, do my choices again in, in later videos in this playlist. And I will also uh, do meiosis. So mitosis and meiosis have a uh, interlinking relationship. All right. 
Okay, but for now, let's uh, do this, um, understand the cell cycle. So the cell begins its life, spends most of its time in the interface, it comes to a point where it has to uh, undergo mitosis. Mitosis is the splitting of the cell into uh, newer cells, All right? So one cell becomes two cells and so forth. All right, so we have, and we call this, uh, the mother cell to produce two new cells. So we have, uh, this is the mother cell. The mother cell. Alright, so it comes to a point where this is now the mother cell. So the mother cell has to go undergo mitosis here. And then it produces two new cells. And we call this the daughter uh, cells. Right. So before, now before mitosis, before mitosis can occur, what needs to happen? All right. We, we, we already discussed that, we already discussed the mother's, our cell, human cell, let's say this is a human cell, we're talking about humans now. This mother cell has how many, each cell in our body has how many chromosomes? We said in the previous lesson it has 46, 46 chromosomes. All right, 46 chromosomes. But now, if this, uh, this, d d d this these uh, chromosomes are split into two new cells equally, what are we going to get? We're going to get 23 here and 23 here. Okay, remember these are body cells, okay? These are body cells, somatic cells. So we know somatic... No, let's do a new one. Okay, these are somatic Somatic cells. Alright, somatic cells. Somatic cells means body cells. All the cells in your body except your sex cells, your sperm cell and your uh, egg cell in the female. Alright, so somatic cells are body cells. Alright, so everything except the sex cells. So in the in the somatic cells, uh, we have we have 46 chromosomes. These 46 chromosomes need to split, be identical to the mother cell. But now, if this 46 chromosome split, you're going to have 23 here, 23 there. Are the daughter cells genetically identical to the mother cell? No, it's not identical because the mother cell has 46 chromosomes, whereas the two daughter cells here have now 23 chromosomes. So what needs to happen? What needs to happen to the mother cell before it splits? For the daughter cells to be identically uh, identical to the mother cell, what needs to happen? DNA replication. DNA replication needs to occur before the mother cell splits. All right. So what's going to happen here? This 46 now chromosomes are going to replicate, make a copy of each other, photocopy of each one. So, we're going to end up with how many chromosomes now? We're going to end up with 46 times 2 is equal to, is equal to how many? 92 chromosomes. We're going to have 92 chromosomes. Right? 92 chromosomes. Right? So, this, this cell here now has, it has 46. Now, here at this, just at this point, at this point here, before mitosis occurs, it will be DNA replication. DNA replication. DNA replication will occur. And when DNA replication occurs, your, the mother cell, this cell, this is the mother cell, the mother cell will have how many? 92 chromosomes. Then we know from our grade 10 syllabus what happens prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then we have another, uh, something happens here, it's called cytokinesis. Cyto Kinesis, C Y T O K I N E S I S. Cytokinesis will occur, and cytokinesis basically means that the, the cell will split equally. All right. So this 92 chromosomes in the mother cell will split equally, and it will split into 46. I mean 46, 46. Now, if you look now, the daughter cells. You can see the daughter cells are 46, 46. Are they identical to this mother cell? Ah, uh, yes, they're identical. 
This mother cell here is identical to this daughter cells here. Same. Okay, so in this moment, this uh, small space of time here, the chromosomes will double. The chromosomes must double so that the daughter cells are identical to the original or mother cell. Alright, I hope you understand this grade 12. Alright, please go back to your grade 10 syllabus if you don't understand and just read through that the notes that your teacher gave you and you'll, you'll, uh, it'll come back to you, okay? But we are going to do mitosis and meiosis in great detail in further lessons. So please uh, stay up to date. Uh, keep keep tuning to my channel for that for that video to be uploaded. Okay, grade twelve. Before we discuss uh, in detail DNA replication, there's something very very important to understand before we get there. All right, we need to understand the structure of a chromosome. So in all our cells and all our uh, cells right now chromosomes are in a single state right we know that in a cell uh, most of its life is spent in interphase so during that interphase uh, duration of the cell cycle of the life of the cell the chromosome is found in a single state so what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you that we find this is the chromosome right so this is a chromosome so basically how you can um, um, yeah, so this is a chromosome, and then we find our D, our our DNA, our double stranded DNA is found in this chromosome. So just to zoom in into the chromosome, um, we'll have our uh, let me draw this. No. We'll have our DNA. Okay, I hope this. Okay, so we have our DNA here. So this is our our double double helix DNA found in a chromosome, right? So it's a single state, uh, single state of the chromosome. So this is how most of our cells, the DNA, the chromosomes are found in this state. But what happens now when interphase comes to an end? And then the, the cell is preparing for mitosis to occur, for new cells to be produced. What happens is that this DNA, like I said, the DNA needs to replicate. DNA replication needs to occur. So if I write this down, so DNA replication. So DNA replication is occurring in this, in this uh, direction. And what's going to happen? We're going to produce a new structure. Right, a new structure. So we can... Um, if I draw it like here, right, right, so we have our chromosome, our double chromosome. So this, this single stated chromosome made a copy of itself, right, so we can draw it here, if I can draw, no, it's not going to work, okay, let's draw it like this, this is such a Right, we just draw it like here. Yeah. Right, so we have our DNA in its chromosomes. It has made a copy. So this chromosome is this chromosome, and it made a copy, okay, a photocopy of itself. And now it is ready. Now the cell is ready because it has replicated its DNA, its chromosomes. It is ready to now undergo mitosis to produce new cells where the new cells are genetically identical to the original cell in terms of the number of chromosomes. Right. So just quickly, let's label what we call uh, this, this one copy, we call it a chromatid. A chromatid, C H R O M A T I D, a chromatid. Then we call this structure, there's a structure that holds these two chromatids together, and we call that a central mere. Let me use a different color. Okay, we call this a central 
mirror, a central mirror that holds the two chromatids together. All right. Okay, great. Well, so now we have come uh, to the DNA replication. Now we're going to be zooming in, detailing how DNA replication occurs. DNA replication. All right. Step one, what happens? We have our double uh, helix DNA, DNA that is double helix, okay, that has a double helix structure. So in step one, what needs to happen here? From here to here is step one. What needs to happen? DNA needs to unwind. DNA unwinds, meaning it becomes, it unwinds, so it appears like a ladder, a ladder kind of structure. So from a double helix, it unwinds to resemble a ladder frame. Okay, so that's step one in DNA replication. So now we know that in DNA, in DNA we have adenine joined to thymine. Ty thymine, adenine, cytosine, guanine, guanine, cytosine. So this is uh, an example of a DNA. Uh, bonding with each other all right dna bonds uh, our nitrogenous bases okay so now from this ladder from step one what happens in step two step two dna splits okay so the weak okay the break they break we talked about the hydrogen the weak hydrogen bonds okay so the weak hydrogen weak hydrogen bonds break okay and then you have your single nucleotide structures single strand uh, single strand stranded DNA moves apart all right so we have our our ladder frame so this happens here now what happens in step two this is step two the DNA splits so all these weak bonds between C and G, G and C, A and T, they break apart. All right, they break apart so that we have a single strand of DNA here and single strand of DNA here. All right, now we move on to step three. What happens in step three? We have our single strand DNA, we have our single strand DNA, but we know that DNA is double stranded, so it cannot stay in the state for too long. All right, so what happens? These single-stranded DNA molecules, they combine or they, um, they form a bond with, they with free nucleotides, free nucleotides in the, in, the, uh, in the nucleoplasm, in the nucleoplasm. So these free nucleotides come about and they join. So they're going to join. What's going to join? What free nucleotide is going to join with, uh, with, um, with adenine? It's going to be a thymine. And we know that adenine and thymine has two weak hydrogen bonds. So there's a thymine here. Here will be adenine. Then we have, let's use green. Let's see. So we have three bonds here, it will be a G here. Then we have three weak bonds here, we'll have a C here. Right, so this is a new. This is a new double uh, DNA molecule okay we have the same thing and it, the same thing is going to happen to this single strand it's going to pick up so we have another single strand here this will be A here T uh, C yeah and G okay two bonds two bonds Three bonds, three bonds, three bonds. All right. Okay, great. Well, so now we have. So in step three, what's going to happen? The single, uh, single strand, strands, uh, single strand 
DNA picks up free nucleotides. Okay, basically that's what happens. And it forms two double. So now you can see DNA replication means it means it makes a copy of it. it it's making a photocopy. And you can see that these copies they're identical to the original. You see A T T A C G G C A T A T T A T A C G C G G C G C. So we have had we have undergone DNA replication, meaning we have replicated or made a photocopy of the DNA or the of the original DNA molecule. So we have undergone step three. Then step four, what happens? Okay, so what happens in step four? This, these two uh, uh, identical copies become uh, double. They become double stranded. What happens? They intertwine. Intertwine to form two double helix structures. All right. So basically, these two. These two, the number one, this is number one, number two. Number one is gonna is gonna is gonna make its double here, it's gonna intertwine and it's gonna become its own. And then number two is also gonna intertwine and become its own. So then we have two identical, we have two identical copies of the DNA. Two identical, identical to the original. Right, so be uh, great to So that is the end of DNA replication. Right. Okay, great to So before I end this lesson, we need to uh, discuss the three significance of uh, DNA replication. What is the significance of DNA replication? Why does DNA replication have to occur? So the first one, so let's write down significance. The first significance is that DNA replication ensures that the daughter cells in mitosis will have the identical DNA makeup as the parent cell. So to simplify that sentence, uh, it, ma it makes sure makes sure the um, yeah the the daughter. Cell is identical to mother cell. Okay, so if the mother cell in a human body has 46 chromosomes, the daughter cell must also have 46 chromosomes. That is basically what that means. All right, number two. Uh, all right, number two. So. Number two, so identical, genetically, sorry, this is identical in what way? Genetically, genetically, genetically identical, all right? They must have the same number of chromosomes. Number two, uh, just to re reiterate the first one, uh, number of chromosomes are equal. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. Okay, number of chromosomes are equal in the daughter cell. Each daughter cell are equal in each in each daughter cell. In each daughter and mother cell. Okay, but why do I say in each daughter cell? Because at the end of mitosis, there are two new cells. So these two new cells are called daughter cells. So in each daughter cell, there must be equal number of chromosomes and that number must also equal to the mother cell all right and then number three the last one dna replication ensures genetic properties are transmitted from one generation to the next all right so it ensures the transmission of genetic material okay from parent 
to offspring. All right, and which was the last, the third uh, significance links to meiosis and meiosis. Meiosis is different to mitosis. So meiosis occurs, mitosis occurs in somatic cells, whereas meiosis occurs in sex cells. And meiosis we will we'll discuss in later videos on this playlist. Okay, great 12. So we have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope uh, I've made it much easier to understand. Um, I thank you so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share with your family and friends. And please subscribe. I thank you so much again for watching.